I don't want to take anything away from you. But if you're going to give anything to anyone else, I want it over here. That is it. If you're not, if you're going to put stuff into your own business, I'm cool with that. But when I see you march toward and run towards someone else's thing, I know you needed to be there and I know that girl needed you. But just for me to see you do it, it made me jealous. Hi, I'm Mrs. Melanin. And I'm Belief Bell. And we're here with episode 98 of How, How Married, Married Are, Are you? you? My name is Belief, this is Eva, and we've been married nine years. Live in California, got four, four kids. kids. Relationships scary and it's very necessary that we share all of our struggles and we ask how, how merry I are. You? Every Tuesday and Thursday, shawty. If you're listening, you're in the wedding party. Sometimes deep, sometimes lighthearted. I don't know what else to say, so it's time to get it started. It's chocolate baby story time. Chocolate baby story time. It's, it's chocolate baby story time. One, two, three, and it's chocolate baby story time. All right. Um. Uh. Had a rough. I mean, I didn't really had a rough time. Naya has just, you know. She's the way she talks to me is very disrespectful. You know, I'd be like, Naya, please go brush your teeth. Okay. You know, and I've kind of had enough of it. I just was like, yeah, man, I'm, you're not going to talk to me like that. And she kept doing it, kept doing it, kept doing it. So I was like, look, you just got to go to sleep. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to read a bedtime story to you if you're rude like that. Mm -hmm. So I just let her go to sleep, man. And she was pissed. Mm -hmm. So she was screaming, closed the window, turned on the fan and dipped. Mm. Yeah, and so I had to kind of let her feel that, um, and I don't care. <laughs> I don't regret it at all. I know. What about you? In the middle of the night last night, I woke up to Uzi giving me kisses. Mm -hmm. It was the sweetest thing ever. They were dry kisses too, so it was even better. You know? <laughs> but yeah, that was just a sweet moment. Yeah. that I wish I could have recorded, but, you know, it was dark, and I just had to be present. Yeah, he was, I remember him, like, laying on my back, and, like, you know, talking. Mm -hmm. He know. was up for a minute last night. Yeah, we were both asleep, though. <laughs> but anyway, all right, we're hopping into episode 98, a continuation of episode 96. Six. So... Um, last time we left off on this subject, um, what happened? Um, we were arguing about how you feel pressure and how I'm not understanding the pressure you're under. And I was saying that I'm under pressure from you and you were not really understanding that. And then we had a meeting with someone who... Um, you know, just, just a side note to everything. Um, we have, we decided to invest money into Yvette's brand. So when that whole conversation was being had about, you know, when we were in the kitchen, when Yvette was in the kitchen, she said, Hey, I want a chef. I want a housekeeper and, you know, a nanny when we get rich. And it triggered me. Everyone was like, well, why is Glenn so triggered? Like, he, he should want to fulfill his wife's dreams. And, like, some of the things you guys don't understand. If you guys haven't listened to episode 90, uh, 96, please go back and listen to that right now before you continue because it's just going to be confused. Um, but the reason why I was so triggered is because, like, you know, Yvette wants to move forward with this huge investment. Now, the investment is, um, I'm going to just go ahead and tell him how much it is. I don't know if that's necessary. Why is that necessary? Well, because I, I feel like it would it would help them understand that like I'm why I'm saying it's not just on me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, um, okay, so last year we invested fifteen thousand dollars into Belief in Fatherhood with this marketing company to really like take us through the ringer and help we figure out help us figure out who we are. I was figure out our new logo, colors, all the stuff, and basically get on it like a 
forward moving traction. And if you can tell by some of the growth that has happened in the systems that we have in place with belief in fatherhood, I feel like it really did pay off and it is paying off. And so um, the gentleman, a good friend of, our, a good friend of mine, um, approached us about investing into Yvette, you know, the same amount of, you know, attention. But instead of 15, it was going to cost $10,000. And so I was kind of taken aback, like, you guys were supposed to be doing an interest meeting. I didn't realize it was going to come out as an, like something that we're putting money in. Nor did I. Nor did Yvette. But Yvette, um, I would say when I was kind of like reluctant or like asking questions, you were a little offended. But like, why wouldn't you want to invest in me? Kind of. Mm. Would you say that's true? Um. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm the, I'm the, um, I'm what we reverse roles in our relationship. Uh, before I figured out what I wanted to do, Yvette would, you know, we go on hikes and then we, she'd be tuck, talking to me about all the things that I could be doing with my life. I could be a substitute teacher. I could be DJing. I should be doing this. I could teach. I could go back to school. You know what I'm saying? It was like all these things. And I was like, I don't want to do any of that, you know? Um, and so in this season, I've been like, you know, you could start your own head wrap company. You can, um, you know, we could do a book club. We can do this. We can do that. And uh, it's really been me kind of like, what do you want to do? You know what I'm saying? And so the investment would be for Yvette to figure out what she wants to do and what is best for her brand itself. So mind you, all that's going on in my head when she asked me, what's, you know, when we become rich, this is what I want. And I'm kind of like, well, what are you going to do to make that happen? Because you have all the capabilities I have, you know what I'm saying? That's how I feel, you know, um, except it'll be a little bit easier for you um, it's just as far as the business, I'm not talking about like managing motherhood and all that stuff, but it'll be a little bit easier for you because I can help you steer and not make a lot of the same mistakes that I made, which took me a whole bunch of time. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, so that's kind of where we left off with the last conversation. We had that, we had another conversation with, um, you know, the company that we're working with, uh, to help in, invest in that. And then we had a therapy appointment. And now we're just kind of like, I'm, I'm like spent. Um, you know, yeah, I'm spent. And so I don't know. Do you have anything to say? No. Does anything. I mean, I don't know. Like, do you want to recap any of the conversations we've had since episode 96 or. Are we just? Uh, yeah, we can recap forward. some of the conversations. I mean, we can recap some of the conversations. Do you want to go through the comment section? Is that what you want to do? Or like, because like, I feel like there was a lot of like misunderstanding there that maybe we can kind of clear up. Um, but at the same time, you know, we can, we can not. Whatever you want, whatever you feel is best. I, I don't know what's best. So here's the thing. Something's going on with Glenn. Oh gosh. He's been giving me <laughs> like the ob obligatory conversation for the past 24 hours. Yeah. And it's like, and it's beyond what you're bringing up right now. So I'm just kind of like, are we going to just sit here and talk about that when we have other things, another cloud hanging over? What's going on? And I don't even know if this is the appropriate um, place to have this conversation, but I'm just saying whatever you think is best, babe. No, I mean. Because I was going to let you pass tonight. You're going to let me pass what? Like not having to record. Like we would just skip this day. Yeah, no, but that really doesn't do anything for anybody. Mm -hmm. it, it, it sets everything behind. Mm -hmm. um, uh, no, I mean, I don't, I don't. We don't have to talk about, I don't want to, I don't want to, I really haven't finished processing all my thoughts. I'm trying to calm myself down. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know how you get, 
you get like into a position where you you're you feel like overwhelmed and like angry um and you have to like remind yourself of all the truth mm. you know what i'm saying and so i don't think i've i've been like reminding like for the like for the like yeah all day yesterday i was like oh i got a right to be mad you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and then like the second half of today i've been kind of like yeah let's just remember truth who you are you know what i'm saying like who your wife is like what the mission is because like i think what happens is when we get upset like if i was to talk to you yesterday it would have been all bad you know what i mean and then we'd have the i'd have to, we, we wouldn't be able to do the homework from therapy you know what i'm saying but i'm really trying to like just like remind myself okay like these things are true this is not true or this is, I'm not understanding the behavior. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm just trying to like, you know, be positive for a change. And it's not, it's, and I don't really want to, it's weird because I know it's like I'm holding something, but I, if I let it go, then I don't know what it's going to do. You know what I'm saying? And that's not fair to you. So I think we should pick up from the last discussion um, because, you know. Okay. Okay. So. Um, I already said I've been avoiding the comment section because I just didn't have the capacity to read it. I peeked in and out. Yeah. I mean, it seems like most of the, like most of the people kind of understood both perspectives mm -hmm. uh, which was pretty cool um you know some people were like yo Yvette's totally wrong and some people were like man Glenn why would you not want to you know serve your wife and it's not really about us being wrong or right but it's about us being like on one accord and I think that what happened was basically we figured out that what she's communicating, what I'm communicating are two different things. Mm -hmm. So like she, Yvette is saying, you know, well, you tell them what the, you tell them what you're saying. I'm not going to have to talk to you. For you. Well, I feel like what I was basically saying is I, and I don't like, I guess it, um, you know, I guess it came out the wrong way. But when I said what I was saying, I was saying it from a place of exhaustion Right. Like I was in the kitchen, tired, you know, didn't really feel like cooking and all the things. Um, and you were sharing with me about the Oprah opportunity and whatever. And we didn't so, tell them. Well, at this point, hopefully you're following us on social media. If you're not, you should. Um, but Glenn had an opportunity to basically be a part of a Zoom call with Oprah Winfrey, Tyler Perry, Killer Mike, and 100 Black Fathers. And that aired on Tuesday, um, what was the date? June 30th? Mm -hmm. And uh, and yeah, so he was telling me about that opportunity, and so it was kind of like really cool. Like that's a huge opportunity to just sit down and talk with Oprah. And, um, and then there's just been a lot of different opportunities and doors opening for Glenn. And so I made a statement um, about when we become rich, like this is how I would love to allocate funds. And it was basically coming from a place of exhaustion. Um, but it was also a way to like affirm the work that he's doing, you know, like, it's like, I have confidence in you to make this happen. And I wasn't necessarily saying that I didn't want to contribute to making that happen but when he asked the question, so what are you going to do to make that happen? Kind of caught me off guard. And then I responded in a way that says, well, you always make things happen. And um, and then I guess that was just kind of like, dude, you were like, dude, I don't know if I'm correct me if I'm wrong. But I feel like you're like, dude, you're just putting more and more pressure on me. 100 um, percent. Um, Yeah. And I would say what what I what I heard and what. I received from that was, you know, you are already doing a great job and you're successful. And 
you're going to keep being successful. You know, um, this isn't difficult for you. Um, so while you're being successful, let me just put in a little bit of requests mm -hmm. so that you remember what I want when we get there. Mm -hmm. And I think the interesting thing is like everybody wants to congratulate you and tell you they're proud of you, but no one wants to like work alongside with you and struggle through the, the pain of, I feel like I'm holding on by a thread mm. and it seems like you, the way you make it sound is it just, it just was almost like, you know, like, you know, the request, like the way you said it was so like, it seems so um, like pretentious, you know, mm. just like, yeah, it, it'd be like, it'd be like me saying, I want, I want crabs tomorrow. Like make, make, make some crabs. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, and yeah. And so I guess I got to bring it up, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm going to say? Mm -hmm. What am I going to say? Something about me leaving yesterday. Mm -hmm. You know, so, <clears throat> you know, so I guess, you know, somebody, you know, who's close to the family is going through a hard time, extremely hard time, harder than we've ever seen. And so um, I... You know, like the the what the message I'm telling myself, the story I'm telling myself when you communicate how, you know, much pressure you're under and how you don't you can't do whatever you want to do or like. There's always an obstacle, like I feel like the story is very the same, you know, and. When you sprung into action for your friend. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> you know, to be by her side, which I feel like is very commendable. It showed me that you're more reactionary than proactive. And sometimes, you know what I'm saying? And so I was thinking the tenacity you know what I'm saying? Like to get up and go or like by any means necessary, I'm going to be by this person's side. Like this is my friend. I have to be there for them. You know what I'm saying? I just was like, um, that's what I'm missing. Like that's what I'm missing. Like that, you know, or well, that's what like I feel like, you know, that is the equivalent of a um of a party it's something for you to do like it's a project you know what i'm saying and i commend you you know what i'm saying for being by your friend's side and all that but i'm i think i've just i just kind of clicked from you i was like don't expect that here you know what i'm saying like that don't expect that that's all it was for me you know what i'm saying and so i've been kind of like trying to convince myself that I don't need or want that type of energy from you. You know what I'm saying? I, I tried to say that like as best as possible. Um, but I don't like, I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to be okay with like, yeah, man. Because, like, everything that stood in your way before that moment didn't seem real. You know? What do you mean? Like, if it's anything that, um, that you, that you think you could be doing or something, there's an obstacle in the way, and you're kind of like, man, I just need this you know what i'm saying or i just need that to get through this thing so i can do what i have to do but that day nothing stops you hmm. 
like you found a way to make it like you found a way to get by that person's side. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know if you think the two correlate, you know, I don't, you don't think they correlate or do you don't think they, what's the difference between that and your life? Like I totally neglected my life in order to be there. Mm -hmm. You know, I took advantage of the fact that we have a nanny and I took advantage of the fact that my mom was off work to at least be here for the kids. So I like left behind my motherly duties or I got my motherly duties covered so that I could be there for my friend. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand. If I hadn't done that, then I would be here doing what I'm supposed to do. Or accomplishing something that you, you know, you tell me that I, you know, like. Uh, like what? For example. Um, um, it, you know, it could be anything, you know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. Like blogging, a, writing a blog post or writing a blog, blog editing post. a podcast or something. I don't yeah. know. Editing a podcast, doing, doing something that you, you, you say that you need help doing, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you want to do, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And so I feel like I've been doing more of that since we hired a new nanny. Yeah. 100%. But I'm just saying when it's something that you want to do, nothing stops you. There's nothing in your way. You find a way. It's like you become tactical. It's it's insane. It's like all of a sudden, like nobody asked you to go anywhere. Like no one told you to be by anybody's side. Like you, you had to be there. That was top priority. And... That's the same way I feel about like everyday work life. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Do you not understand what I'm saying? I think we're gonna need help navigating this conversation because yeah. I don't I don't know if your perspective is a fair comparison. Mm -hmm. um, like, I don't get it. If it was you, I would drop everything that I was doing to be by your side too. But it is me. Like, I am the one in pain. I am the one that is hanging on by a thread. Like, I am the one mm -hmm. that has all the pressure talking to Oprah and Tyler Perry and have magazine people magazine and Bryce Dallas Howard and Ron Howard I am I am that that is who I am and so I I just don't get it like I don't understand what you want from me I want exactly what you did for her you found any means necessary to be by that woman's side in her time of need and you didn't necessarily know what it looked like but you made a way to get there and you figured out how to sit beside her and listen. I had an idea of what it looked like. Yeah. And so, like, I don't know. I feel like this is unfair. Okay. Because I try to be here for you, but you don't give me anything to work with. So what are you wanting me to do? Are you wanting me to, I don't understand what you, you want from me. Yeah. Like, I am constantly asking, how can I help? But you don't have, like, clear ways. And when you do have clear ways, I do exactly what you asked me to do. Yeah. Um, it, sometimes it isn't clear, you know? Like, going up to where you went to wasn't clear. You didn't know that. That is, that's not even like you. You're not the type of person to, like, grieve with someone. You know what I'm saying? Like... Not to say you, you can't be good at it or you're not growing, but I'm just saying like that is not something. If I'm telling you, A, you can do A, B, and C. One of those things is grieve. You're not doing that. You know what I'm saying? Like, but you. But, if I have a choice. Yeah, if you have a choice. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But. 
like I'm trying to figure out like, okay, do I just, do we just give up like in that area? You know what I'm saying? Like, do we just, do I just, do I just like, okay, that this is what it is. I'm, we're, we like, let's not work toward it anymore. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm exhausted by it. Yeah. I am the pressure. fatigued. Yeah. It is the the hope for this not to be a conversation that we continuously have. Um, I'm losing hope like that it gets better because I just don't like I literally don't know what you expect from me. I do not know what you expect from me. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Yeah. Like it seems so unfair for you to keep saying this to me when you don't give me anything to work with. Uh -huh. And I don't even know how to be tenacious toward like doing better. It's like, what do you want? Just tell me and I'll do it. When I tell you that you make it happen or I'm expecting a return on the investment or make some head wraps or whatever it is, like I expect you to do those things that you know what I'm saying? Like, so you want me to relieve the financial pressure? Basically, just say that. Just say that. Say no, it. No, that's not what I'm saying. Then what are you saying? I'm saying that if we're going to invest money into your business, then I think that you should want a return, not just me. Of course, I want a return. Of right, course, but, I intend but, on a return. But the conversation is, if you spend ten thousand dollars, if we spend ten thousand dollars on me, and the what comes out of it is your wife has peace then it's worth it. You know what I'm saying? Like, is yeah, that but the peace is going to come in like knowing where I'm headed. I feel like I'm not supposed to expect anything of you. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I'm not supposed to expect anything, but what do you expect of me? Hmm. You have a lot of expectations. I don't, I mean, like, honestly, I don't have to bring this up ever again. Like, we don't have to do this. It's a fight for me to, like, want this. And, uh, you know, we've been talking about it for a long time now. Um, and I feel like I have given you, like, certain things to do, but and you've gotten better at those things for sure. But I'm just thinking, like, maybe... I'm just completely off. You know what I mean? Like, I'm completely off. And I just should just leave you alone. <laughs> you know? That's where I'm headed. But, like, it... When people tell me, like, you should, you should sell shirts. I got a really cool idea. You should uh, teach kids how to, you know, more about black history. You know, what about the music? What are you doing with that? Like, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm like close, closing in the walls, closing in on your boy. Um, but I like, yeah, I feel like I'm speaking very clear, and I'm saying that, um. You didn't necessarily know how to be a part of that situation, but you made you made yourself available. You know what I'm saying? In any means, by any means necessary to do what you had to do. You know what I'm saying? And that's how I'm living life for the family. You know what I mean? It's like I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but I'm thinking like maybe we should just separate the like like my expectations there. Like just once and for all and just being like, look, man, this is not a part of I know we, we said this. This is part of the goals this is what we wanted to do, but we don't want to do this anymore. This isn't a goal for us. Because I'm also I'm also tired of having a conversation. Like it irritates me when people tell me they're proud of me. Like, I'm grateful, but I'm also like, man, this is, 
super difficult and everyone thinks like, oh my gosh, you know, you just win, you're winning, you're winning. It's like, I'm going to lose myself. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm really like losing myself. I'm losing it. The same way you feel, you know? I, I I don't I don't want to have these expectations anymore. Like I don't I want you to I want you to be free from it. And I don't know how like what what does that mean? You know what I'm saying? Like I don't know where where we go from here. Like what we talk about as far as business is concerned. Because like we were talking to um the therapist and it was like by default you're in it. You know what I'm saying? Like you're not out, you're in. And so we just have to figure out what like what that means, you know. So Will you go get him? Yeah. Dude, I'm feeling like you should just like I don't think you should quit, but at this point it's kinda like what are what are you doing? <laughs> like what are you doing with what with your life do you want to do this or is it is it that is this something that like where are you at with belief in fatherhood or is it that you are so i don't know man i don't know i don't know what i'm trying to say Um, I don't know if I've ever, like, I love what I do, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not sure I'm, like, I can't, I can't go at this momentum. I can't go at this rate, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't. Like, this type of stuff really breaks people. Like, you look at all the other YouTubers who got super popping and who, like, made, like, you know, it, it only takes the the right retweet, right retweet or the right share for me to blow up out of, out of this world. And I'm not prepared for that. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know what it takes to be successful at, at this. No one is like pulling me along and holding my hand and showing me. I'm literally just doing what I, like I know who I am. Thank, thanks for the, the marketing company. Like I know who I am. I know what we're doing. I know what I'm supposed to do and what I'm not supposed to do, but I don't know what it takes. You know what I'm saying? But it costs a lot. One thing I'm refusing to risk is this family. I refuse to lose this family to this business. That is guaranteed. I don't want it that bad. I, f I don't even feel like, I honestly feel like it is a calling. I don't feel like it is of my own accord. Like it's some skills that I've, I've kind of accomplished and I'm not leaving anything up to chance and I'm pouring everything I know how to do into this because I'm, I'm giving all of my value to it you know, as far as like what I bring to a workplace um, and God increases it all. And so to see God's favor on it, well, I don't even, you know what I'm saying? I'm not even sure like what's happening. Like, if, is this feeding my ego? You know what I'm saying? But I just refuse to lose the family for it. So if it's between us, the, you know, this family and the business, the business dies, but we're broke. I'm cool with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, but in order for it to thrive, it's going to take more than just my knowledge and my relentlessness and my, it's going to take more than that. Like, I'm going to need some of George. I'm going to need some of RJ. I'm going to need some of James. I'm going to need some of you. I'm going to need some of Maggie. I'm going to need some of whoever else is around. Um, And because I know that. I see other people on other missions and I'm cool with that.
but like I'm a I'm a like I'm not a bad husband. Like, you know what I'm saying? I would say that I'm a better husband than I am a father. I would say so. You know what I mean? Um I see you. I I do not I am not putting I am not trying to put pressure on you. Anything that you need to make yourself successful in your position as a stay-at-home mom and a wife, I want to give that to you. I don't want to take anything away from you. But if you're going to give anything to anyone else, I want it over here. That is it. If you're not if you're going to put stuff into your own business, I'm cool with that. But when I see you march toward and run towards someone else's thing, and it's like you this person needed you. This is how crazy it is making me. I know you needed to be there and I know that girl needed you, but just for me to see you do it, it made me jealous. Like I'm jealous that you would be so quick to to run, then I'm falling apart. And maybe I don't say it often enough. But I'm like, yo. Cool. Don't be upset. Don't be upset. Like I feel like um I like it's not healthy. You know what I'm saying? That's why I told you I don't want to do that other thing. Because in order for me to do that, it's going to take more. I can't do it. It's going to make us rich. And I can't take it. You know, you don't do it often. It's not something I, like I see you chase after other people. But for, you know, when we're having regular conversation and it's every day, it seems like I feel bad for you because I'm like, yo, my wife can't catch a break. She needs this. She needs that. But then I watch you pour out yourself. You know what I'm saying? For these things that I don't know if they, you know, are as valuable as you deem them. You know what I mean? And so I would really love um, to see you more proactive about our own situation. Um, because I didn't know you had that in you. I didn't like to watch. I'm like, man, she definitely don't have time for nothing. So I'm not going to ask her anything, but someone calls you or you call someone, you get information and you know what I'm saying? Like I, when you talk to me, you tell me that you, you, you're tired. You got a lot of pressure, all this stuff. So I'm not going to put more on you. Like you're always telling me that you are spent so why am I going to give, why am I going to overbear my wife with, with other stuff? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just, I'm trying to get you relief, but then like you get relief and you're, you're gone. You're like, that's what I'll do. I don't feel like you're equipped to handle that situation. It wasn't a handling of a situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You were just being there for someone. Yeah. I just don't think that this is a good example, example. of like this. Mm -hmm. Like what you're trying to express, I don't really think it's a good. Okay, so. Like I understand what you're saying. I think. Yeah, but 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 it was a it was a strenuous situation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I'm saying is. We don't know when strenuous situations are going to happen with us. So we have to prepare and work like crazy so that we can make sure at least we're set. It's proactive. Before something bad happens, we already know that because of our work ethic and our like team, like our, us on the same mission, we are going to be fine. We are not going to stress out when something crazy happens. 
because we're already fine because we've already been doing the work, getting all the things that we need to make sure our family is safe and we can help other people in need. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't feel like, you know, it's, it, you know, uh, uh, besides it being kind of a double standard, I don't think I would be able to get away with, you know what I'm saying? If, if we were in the same situation. Are you kidding me? No. I, I mean, would probably be pushing you out the door. I know that, but I don't think I could do it. You know what so I'm saying? So saying get away with it and you being able to do it are two totally different things. Mm-hmm. Um, and the conver- like the conversation I had with that person's family member the morning of mm-hmm. is what compelled me to leave. Mm-hmm. I don't know, man. I don't know how to have this conversation. I just feel like what what would it take okay so if i got sick and i lost my ability to edit Mm -hmm. you would be zapped into position Mm -hmm. you would work like crazy you would do whatever you had to do to get it done Mm -hmm. all right i'm just saying that before you need to do that like we should just do it now you know what i mean like whatever you have a capacity for Like learn to edit video? <laughs> no. What? But that's the thing. It's like, because I'm doing that, you don't see a need to do any of that. Of sure, if you help me edit video, that would be amazing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm saying whatever you want to do, it's a place for you here. No, okay. Um... I don't, yeah, we don't need it. We don't need it. We don't need it, man. We don't need what? We don't need it. We don't, we don't have to be in, we don't have to be in that, in that wave. But if we, if we're not, then I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, am I supposed to be listening to everything you're saying? You know, the other day you came in here. It's so funny. And this was my, how married are you for today? Can we just be done? How married are you, Glenn? The other day you came in here and you said you were making another request about something. And I didn't even hear what you said, but I asked you, am I supposed to be listening to this? Is this something you just talking or are you really making a request that you want me to log and register? Because I'm going to log it by default as your husband. I'm thinking like, okay. I'm going to get this done for my wife. But now I'm asking you if that is even necessary, which I feel like was very wise on my part as a husband. Mm-hmm. How married are you? I'm so married that I scheduled, scheduled you an appointment for your shoulder today. Thank you. You're welcome. I really appreciate that. Is it just a physical? Is it a physical too? They can't do a physical until August. Oh, jeez. So I just said, can you get him in there sooner for his shoulder? Okay. Cool. And And that's that's just just how married we are. are.